Welcome to church. This is Reverend Sylvia now from the stables of the virtuous woman. This is a church without boundaries, a church without borders. It is Sunday morning and we are excited to share the word of God. Let's get into the word of God. So today I'm going to speak on a subject that I've entitled time. Time as in hours, as in days, as in minutes, as in seconds. I'm talking about time today. We're going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 14 to 18. Genesis 1, verses 14 to 18. And the Bible reads, And God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give lights on the earth. And it was so. God made great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the fourth day. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word today will come with power for signs, wonders, and miracles, that it will restore, it will encourage, and it will strengthen somebody in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that as I speak, mighty God, let me only speak that which I hear from your heart. Let me speak that which I hear whispering in your mind, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm talking about time. Time was created by God for the purposes of man. Time was created by God for the purpose of man. Why did he do that? There was a good reason for seasons, for years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds. Time needed to separate instances to separate what we do, to separate, to give us the day, the night, to give us a year, to give us a week, so that we would be able to do our works in certain scopes of time. That's why God created it, for the purpose of man. There's a season for everything. There's a season for everything. And those seasons are the ones that bring clarity to what we are doing. There's a season to be born, or there's a season to plant, there's a season to harvest. There's a season to start a project, and you give it a timeline. It gets to the end of it, you want to see the conclusion, the maturing, the actualization of that project. Time has to come in, in order to guide you to separate the day from the night. Time rules over day. Verse 18 says, time rules over the day and night. And time, the word says time does not wait for anybody. Time doesn't wait for you. When the clock is ticking, it's ticking, it's going. Although you, as man, you have control over time. How do you have control over time? You see, in verse 26 of Genesis 1, 26, when the Lord God said, let us create man in our own image, Let's look at that. Let us in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over the creatures that move along the ground. That is why God created time. And that is why man has got authority over time. Man has control over time because God created him in his image. And he said, let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the life, over all the earth, including time, over everything that God created because God created time. And so God created them. And so it was like that, that we have, you as man, you have authority over time. You have control over time. Time should never control you. But you see, what is in the world, because of the sin, the sin, the curse that came, time started controlling us. Time started controlling us. It's a situation where you feel 
They say time does not wait for you. So when you have a project or when you have targeted to do something and you see that time is going and you are not getting to the end of that project, you start getting discouraged, you start getting frustrated because time now is the one that is determining what you are doing. It is not supposed to be like that, child of God. You have control over time. You have the authority to tell time to stop or to pull time to come forward. You have that authority. Now the question is, how do you do that? God blessed man and he said subdue. That is in verse 28. He said subdue and have dominion. When you have dominion, you have control over everything. But the problem is we do not know that. Or rather, we don't know how to get to that. Or we don't have enough knowledge. Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Let's not perish because of not having knowledge when the word of God is here to guide us, to instruct us. God blessed us so that we would be in control of time. God blessed man. You see, the blessing, the blessing is very, very powerful. When you look at Genesis 27 and you look at the story of Jacob and Esau, how Jacob went out of his way all the time to try and get that blessing, the blessing of the firstborn, getting the blessing of Esau, it's because he knew the power that lay in the blessing. He knew the power that lay in the blessing. The blessing gives you creativity. God is telling us, God blessed man and said, be fruitful. Being fruitful means go and be creative. That creativity, that creativity power lies in the blessing. It lies in the blessing. And God has blessed us and given us that blessing to have, to be fruitful, to be able to be creative. Man has control over time. Let's go to the, to the, book, to the book of 2 Kings and chapter 7. Second Kings, let's see what is going on there. Second Kings chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. And we'll go on also to, um, we'll read the rest of the, of, the, of the chapter from verse 3. So, Second Kings chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow a seer of flour will sell for a shekel and two seers of barley will sell for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. About this time tomorrow, the, uh, the officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. What was happening was that the Arameans, Samaria, was under siege. They were under siege. This, the siege had lasted so long, so long, that they had reached a point where they had no food. They were surrounded by the Arameans and the Arameans army. And what they wanted was to make sure that they destroyed Samaria. But you see, this was a time when they could not go out for productivity. They could not do their usual trading. Everything that they had inside, because it lasted so long, ran out to a point where they started eating their animals. Even the animals finished because they started eating animals. When their donkeys were finished, now they started eating their own children. The situation was so dire for them. The king didn't know what to do anymore. That is how bad their situation was. They were under siege. They could not go in. You see, the cities of those days, the way they were built, is that they are enclosed. They are walled in. And you find that there are always scouts that are standing at the gate to see who is coming or whether enemies are coming in so that they can report to the soldiers in the barracks inside the city. The city was encircled. It was just contained in that area. And so the Arameans army came and surrounded Samaria. They were under siege so many years to a point where they are eating their children. It was not an easy situation. The king was walking around not knowing what to do. He had tried everything, I'm sure, but nothing was working. But then we thank God that there was a man of God in that place. And the man of God was Elisha. And Elisha, if you remember, was the servant of Elijah. 
Elisha was the servant of Elijah. When Elijah was going up, when Elisha realized that this, this time my master is going up, and even the other prophets told him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away today? And he says, I know. He asked for a double portion of Elijah's anointing. And Elijah told him, you will only have it if you see me when the Lord takes me and you see me. Then you will have that anointing. Elisha paid a lot of attention. Remember, he was his servant. You know, he was saving him. You, you know, he was at his beck and call. So he paid attention. And when Elijah was taken up in heaven, in the chariots of fire, took him up in heaven, he dropped his mantle. He dropped his staff. And Elisha picked it. And he ran with it. And you know, from then on, he became the prophet, took over the, 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 the feet, took over the job of Elijah. And he became the prophet in Samaria. And now this is when now all this is happening. Obviously, Elisha has been praying. Man of God knows to pray. Man of God knows to be to, to have intimacy with the Lord because he needs to hear what the Lord is saying. And at this time, the king is coming to his house. I'm sure it was to consult or to just see what is going on. Elisha, what is the Lord saying? And Elisha says to him, by this time tomorrow, a seer of flour will sell for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Two seers of barley will sell for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. But then his official, the same one that he's leaning on, the one who's helping him to walk, skeptical, disbelief, unbelief, full of doubt, says, surely, even if the Lord would open the floodgates of heaven, this would not ha happen. I'm talking about time, and this man is saying it would not happen. You have the power, child of God. You have the authority to call in time, to call it in. How do you call it in? You cannot call in time when you are in the natural, what Dr. Bill Winston calls, calls the, the third dimension. You've got to step into the fourth dimension, where the supernatural power of God is in operation, where the blessing is operating. God's creativity power, the creative power is at work. That is where you will be able to call in time. That is where you'll be able to call in time. How are you calling in time? You are discerning the very thoughts of God. You are hearing the heartbeat of God. You are in the sphere where everything is happening supernaturally. And so if it's happening supernaturally, there will be supernatural provisions. Calling in time. Elisha is saying about this time tomorrow, the situation was dire, like I have explained it. There was nothing. So how was that going to, to, to happen? The skeptic said, even if God opens the gates of heaven. Oh, God will open the gates of heaven. God will call in time, will cause you to call in the time. And you, you will say about this time tomorrow, 24 hours. That was not the only incident. Remember when Sarah was having a baby? Sarah, and, uh, uh, Abraham did not have a child with his wife, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord comes to visit him and tells him, I'm about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So as the conversation is going on, he brings in the situation and says, I don't even have a child. I don't even have a child. How am I going to be a father of many nations? And the angel of the Lord tells him that this time next year, Sarah will have a baby. Sarah laughed. <laughs> the angel heard him and said, why is Sarah laughing? She says, I didn't laugh, my Lord. But she laughed. Why was she laughing? Because she was thinking, oh, come on, look at me. I'm, I'm old in age. My body is at a point where it cannot even provide an egg for me to be fertilized, for me to have a baby. So how is this going to happen? Calling in time, calling in things that are not as though they were when you are walking in the supernatural. Elisha was calling in time. About this time tomorrow, what situation do you have, child of God? You have the authority, you have the power to control time, to control time. Call in the time. If you have a project that takes you two years, call it in for three months. When you call in something, what is, happens is this. There is supernatural provision. Whatever it is that you wanted to, to achieve by the end of that time, God provides it supernaturally. So when the time is called in from three years to three months, 
even the provision, what you wanted to achieve, will come in. Exactly what happened at the gate of Samaria. The skeptics do not listen to them. And as for you skeptics, be very careful. When a man of God is speaking, do not say anything. Keep it in your heart. If you are skeptical, keep it in your heart. Lest there will be some pronouncements upon your life. Because the man of God told him that, look, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not partake of it. And when you read on the story, from verse 3, there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we'll die. And if we stay here, we'll die. So let's go over to, to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we leave. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, not a man was there, for the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the high tide and each Bishan kings to, to, to come and attack us. So they ran, and in their running, they left everything. They had pitched uh, tents, because now they were camping there. It's like their whole city moved there to just lay siege on Samaria. So everything else that they were doing, they were continuing with their business. Obviously, they were trading. They were doing everything that they needed to do. They were living their lives. But what they wanted was to make sure that they destroyed Samaria. So the, the lepers go there, and they enter one tent, and they find there's food. First thing they do is eat because they are hungry. Then they go to the next tent and find there's gold, silver, everything. Then they go to another tent. They said, ah, they were hiding them. But they realized this is too much. These people are not here. They found only donkeys and horses tied. But people were gone. And people had scattered when they were running, throwing things around. So after three attempts, they said, no, 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 this is not correct. Let's go and report at the gate what we have found. They went and reported. And word got to the king. And the king sent some of his um, officials to go and make sure to go and make sure that what the lepers were saying was true. They followed the Arameans and the army and the people as they were up to where the Jordan, but they did not find them. They came back and reported. And by the following day, for real, a, a, a shekel of flour was selling, a, a, a seer of flour was selling for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The man of God had called in the time. Supernatural provisions. Flower was there, barley was there, and everything else that they needed was there at the gate. But guess what happened to the one who was skeptical? The king asked him to be in charge of the gate. And while he was at the gate, people trampled over him because there was a stampede. People were fighting for food. Everybody wanted to buy the little, that they, whatever they could find. And they trampled over him and he died. That's why I've said skeptics. When a man of God is speaking, when he gives a word from the Lord, keep quiet, lest there will be some, a pronouncement upon you. But time was called in, and everything that they needed was supernaturally provided. Supernaturally provided. The siege ended. What am I talking about? You have the authority, child of God. What issue are you going through? Could it be an illness? You have the authority to call in Call in the healing. Call in time. If the doctor says in the next six months, you will say in the next two days I'll be fine. Call in the time. Whatever it is that you want to do. You see, when we are in a situation like the way Zambia is in a situation right now, there's drought. And according to the experts, they are saying it will take us two years. Even if it rained so hard, it would take us more than two years for us to get the Kariba to fill we will call in the time. We will fill that kariba just during this same season. This same season as it starts raining. We will believe God and trust God. We will call in the time that the kariba will fill up. So that those who doubt will see that the God whom we serve is alive and that his word is true. Child of God. Let's trust God. There is a situation. Whatever situation you are going through, you can call in the time. You have the authority. You have the dominion. You have the control. Call it in. 
the Kariba must fill up because we need the water to power this nation. We need the water to power, to generate our hydroelectricity. It is the core. Otherwise, if that does not happen, then we will be like Samaria. We will be under siege, but we will not allow that in the name of Jesus. Because we are operating in the supernatural power of God and we are calling in time. How do you do that? How do you do that? To be able to reach a position where you are calling in time, this is the time for you to be intimate with God. It's in the intimacy with God. It's in the being in the word of God that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You are in the word of God. You are meditating on the word of God. You step into the supernatural. Intimacy with God. At that point, that is the point where God reveals himself. That is the point where God speaks to you. The man of God, prophet Elisha was in the presence of God, stepped into the supernatural. And in doing that, in doing that, he was able to call in time. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to achieve, speaking things that are not as though they were. When you are intimate with God, that is where you are supposed to be. That is the secret place. That is where in there God will speak to you. In there you will be able to discern the mind of God. In there, you hear the heartbeat of God. In there, you call things that are not as though they were. In there, you will have revelation knowledge. In there, you will have understanding. You can know something, but before you have the revelation over that issue, even if you speak it, unless it is by the mercies of God, it will not happen. Unless it is by the mercies of God, it will not happen. We cannot perish because of lack of knowledge when we have the word of God guiding us, instructing us. When we know that we need to get into the presence of God, when we know that we need to be intimate with God, we be in the presence of God. Oh, God will speak to you anytime. You connect with his spirit, he will speak to you anytime. Child of God, you've heard the word of God today. For those who have not yet had a chance to receive the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, simply pray this prayer with me. Father God, I've heard the word. And thank you for revealing yourself to me. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for atoning for my sin. I repent of my sins. And from now onwards, I promise that I will follow your ways, that I will walk your work, that I will listen to you and listen and do your instruction in the name of Jesus. With that, you are born again, and congratulations. Find a church, a Bible teaching church. Have fellowship. Go for prayer meetings. Go for church service so that you grow spiritually. And I'll pray for you now. Father, I pray for those that are seeking you, my Lord and my God, that they'll find you. The intimacy that they desire to have with you, let it be, my Lord and my God. Let them be able to step into the supernatural so that they'll be able to hear you when you speak. They'll be able to discern you. They'll have revelation knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, be glorified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Until next time, this has been Reverend Sylvia now from the Stables of the virtuous woman. Be blessed, stay blessed, and God bless you. Shalom.